Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bibbin Ballers. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Korea's latest match in the Asian Cup against Malaysia, a disappointing 3-3 draw. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get, get right into it. So starting with point number one, a basically unchanged starting 11. Unsurprisingly, it was a 4-4-2 put out by Jurgen Klinsmann. Briefly, Choi Yonu and Net, Seo Ryung will left back, Kim Young won and Kim Min Jae as the center backs, Kim Tae won as the right back, Chong Woo Young left midfielder, in the middle Lee Jae Sung and In Bum, on the right Lee Kang In, and up top Kyu Sung and Sunny. So there were three changes, honestly two and a half that I consider to be made by Klinsman. Uh, Kim Tae Won came in for Lee Jae. I consider that kind of a half substitution, since that's been going on in the first and second games, anyways. Uh, Kim Young Won came in for Chong Seung Yeon and Kim Min just slid over to the right. And finally, Chong Woo Young came in for Pak Young Woo. And instead, Lee Jae Sung uh, made that double pivot with Im Bum, like I said. So this decision to basically put out, I don't know, an 80% full strength lineup baffles me. If you look at any of the teams who are serious about going far in this tournament, Japan, Saudi Arabia, even Jordan, who we played in the second match, they all did some kind of rotation so that their players, their starting 11 could have some rest. And that makes sense. A tournament like the Asian Cup, extremely mentally, physically, emotionally taxing. You can't expect your star players to play every single minute of every single game. They're just going to get burnt out. And even if we do make it to the finals, they're not going to be fresh. It's not going to be the same level of performance that you're seeing in the earlier matches of the tournament, okay? But okay, I tried my best to put myself in the shoes of Jurgen Klinsmann. Why would Klinsmann make this sort of decision to put out Sunny? Lee Kang In, Kim Min Jae, Hwang In Bum, even though a lot of them are on yellow cards, and another yellow card would make them miss the next match. Okay, I tried my best to figure out why he would make this type of decision, and the only reason I can think about is that he wanted to build more chemistry with the starting eleven, try and get an emphatic win against Malaysia. I don't know, four nothing, five nothing, six nothing and then carry that momentum into the knockout stages with more support from fans and media. It didn't happen, okay? We, Sunny, Lee Kang In, Kim Min Jae played over 110 minutes and it wasn't an easy match either. The Malaysian players played aggressively. They tackled hard. You could see, you know, it was taxing to the players. And with all due respect to Malaysia, who, by the way, played an excellent game. And I thought that Kim Pang uh, he was a, he's a Korean manager, okay? And he now manages the Malaysian national team. He was the former technical director of the KFA. He was heavily involved in the hiring of former KNT manager Paolo Bento. I thought he did a brilliant job with that team. They looked great out there. But still, with all due respect to Malaysia, embarrassing. We haven't lost to Malaysia since 1985, okay? We play the captain of Tottenham Hotspur, one of the best young players of PSG, and the starting center back for Bayern Munich. You should be walking all over this Malaysian team. Prior to playing us, Malaysia scored zero goals against Bahrain and Jordan. Before today, they never scored three goals in any match in, against any opponent in the Asian Cup. And today, they scored three goals against us. And even the goals that we scored, zero from open play. The first goal, corner kick that Chong Wei Young headed in. Second goal, a moment of brilliance from Lee Kang In. And the third goal, a penalty kick by Sonny. That shows how much of a bad position we're in and how terrible Klinsman is managing this golden generation of Korean footballers. Frustrating 
And honestly, this match could not have gone any worse. So that's point number one. Point number two, where do we even begin with? With the lack of tactics by Jurgen Klinsmann. Okay, he's focusing on this 4-4-2. It's outdated. Very, very few teams in the modern era play this 4-4-2 formation. But okay, Jurgen Klinsmann plays it. If he can make it work, he can make it work. He doesn't. 4-4-2 basically becomes a 4-2-4 for us, okay? Chong Luyong and Yi gang -in are placed super high. And honestly, even Yi jae is asked to help out the, the forwards. So what does that lead? That leads Hwang in -bom as the only cover for this back four. And Hwang in -bom was on a yellow. If he got another yellow card, which there were moments in the, Malaysian, in the match against Malaysia that I thought that he would get another yellow. If he misses... He would miss the next match if he got another yellow. And he is one of the most important players and definitely the best midfielder on this team. What are you thinking, Jurgen Klinsmann? What is going on in that empty brain of yours? Okay. Um, to continue, it's a 4-2-4 and the lines in between... Okay, it's, let's say there's three lines, okay? There's the defense back four, the midfielders, and the front four. The the distance between the three lines is way too big for anything effective to happen. Let me take you through a bit of a couple of images that show how bad this team is organized right now. So this happens just um, as the second half is beginning. Choi Yonu passes it to Hwang Bum, okay? He picks it up. The close the three closest players to him. All Malaysian players. There's no one. I mean, you can, you can. I'm sure you can turn and pass it back to Kim Injae, but where would that take you? Passing it to this player, surely this Malaysian player is going to cut that pass off. There's literally no one that Huang Yingbom can pass to, building up from the back. And look at all this empty space right here. All this empty space. We're not best utilizing the players that we have, and we're not creating spaces. Um, set patterns of play like we saw with Paolo Bento. So Hwang Inbom is being asked to use his own individual abilities to dribble past two or three of the opponent's uh, forwards and midfielders, carry it 20 to 30 yards, and then look for the front four, our fantastic four up front. Okay, That's ridiculous. You don't see that at all in any well-organized team. And I kid you not, two, just two minutes later, same situation happens again. Huang Yinbom picks the ball up from deep. The three closest of the um, players to him, all Malaysian players, okay? He can't pass it to Kim Min-jae, it's being covered. Can't pass it to Yi gang -in, being covered. And honestly, it'd be a risky, risky pass to Kim young won as well, who's being covered. So what does he do? Loses the ball. Not That's not his fault. That's not an end. You can't expect a midfielder, a deep-lying midfielder, to dribble past two or three um, opposing players every single time and build up from the back that way. That's just not sustainable. Any type, There's no system in the whole entire world that expects their central midfielders to do that except Jurgen Klinsmann, okay? The Malaysian player gets the ball. Honestly, any other team other than Malaysia, that'd be a goal. Iran, Japan... Australia, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, that's a goal. But because it's Malaysia, Kim min -jae is able to cover and he's able to prevent that goal. But again, just it's just crazy to me how ineffective our build-up is. And that's not because we don't have the personnel to do it. We showed in the World Cup against the likes of Uruguay, Ghana, Portugal, against these big teams that were able to build out from the back. Kim min -jae, Bayern Munich, Hwang Yinbom plays in the Champions League. Yi Jae Sung, Bundesliga. Kim Young Gon, one of the best uh, left-footed center backs that Korea has ever produced. It should not be difficult as long as there is a system in place. But there isn't. Okay. So let's... So that's the... That's one of many, many, many tactical problems. It starts with playing a 4-4-2. 
were outnumbered in the midfield like crazy. Any team that puts three mid players in the midfield is going to overrun us. If we played against Japan with this 4-4-2, I guarantee you we lose 3 nothing, 4 nothing. They would overrun us with the quality they have in their midfield. So how do you fix this problem? It's kind of simple. You literally play three in the midfield. You take out Choguzo, who has been struggling, but I don't want to criticize individual players. I think it's a lot of it. Of course, Choguzo is out of confidence. He's not playing well, yes, but he's also not in the, he's not playing in the system that's allowing him to succeed. So I think naturally you take out Choguzo. I think Ijezong slots in the number 10 position. Imbom as the, uh, he's box to box. He can play box to box. And central did midfielder, central defensive midfielder. This is my problem. Who are you going to bring in? This match, third match against Malaysia, was the perfect opportunity to test either Pak Jin Sop or Lee Sun Min. But that didn't happen. Chezong and Imbom basically played full time. And in the last 10 minutes, or what, five, what was it, 5 10 minutes of the game, they brought in Pagyongu to close in the match, to close the match for the win. Couldn't even do that, okay? So, who are you going to play as the CDM? You don't know because you didn't use this perfect opportunity to test players, and they're quality players, okay? Pak Jin we saw how good he was at the Asian Games. Can he do it at the national team level? Yisoo Min, play central defensive midfielder. For one of the best ball playing teams in the K League, Kwangju FC, can he do it for the Korean national team? We don't know because, and Klinsman doesn't know because he watches, he, he doesn't scout these players. And if he does, it's through videos on Y Scout. He doesn't attend K League games. He doesn't know these players. It's frustrating to me. So even if he wanted to switch to a 4 3 3, 4 2 3 1, he doesn't know what players to use. This is a problem. This is our national team manager. And he doesn't know the players or the tactics that are best suited to our game. Point number three. And this is, this, honestly, this drove me crazy this morning. I wake up at 6.30, watch the match, trying to cheer on our boys, trying to, you know, stay positive, trying to give Klinsman one last chance. Because it's our golden generation. It's an opportunity to watch Sonny finally lift a cup. And it, it's a perfect, you know, it's it's literally the perfect setting. Sonny and Kangin lifting the cup together. Sonny passing the torch on to Kangin as the national star and captain of this team. I ha I didn't come in with, you know, a lot of expectations, but there was still that hope, you know, maybe, just maybe, despite this terrible manager, our players could get the job done. But no, it was such a frustrating match to watch. And the last straw was this moment right here. Klinsman, after we went down 3-3 to finish second in the group, a group with Jordan, Bahrain, and Malaysia, a group that we should be topping with all due respect to those teams. You know, I don't want to disrespect the other teams in Asia. They played brilliantly against us. But we shouldn't be finishing second in this group. Okay? And look at Klinsman's reaction. Chaduri. Pissed off. Herzog, honestly, I don't know what about him. Assistant coach. I don't know what he does. But Klinsman? He's the happiest guy in the world. Could care less. Where's the passion, okay? I'm not saying you don't have to be as crazy as a Jose Mourinho or an Antonio Conte. But you can't be smiling. You can't be relaxed sitting on the bench when your team just threw a 3-2 lead against Malaysia to finish second in the group in the Asian Cup due to your incompetence. And this, honestly, not surprising either. He doesn't reside in Korea. He doesn't attend K-League matches. He makes regular appearances on ESPN, analyzing random matches. He even set the national team base camp in London 
when we were going to play all the way up in Newcastle so that he could participate in the Legends match for Bayern. I don't know who Bayern were playing. I think it was Chelsea. It was a Legends match between Bayern and some English team. I think it was Chelsea so that he could play for them. I don't think he's serious about this job. In fact, I know he's not serious about this job. This is a hobby to him. This is an opportunity for him to get his one minute of fame. He, th he thought the Asian Cup would be a cakewalk. Oh, we got Sonny, we got Lee Gang, we got Kim Min Jae. We're going to walk through, we're going to win the Asian Cup. He doesn't know anything. And we knew that. Germany, he did well because of Yogi Lev. Bayern Munich, Lom, Philipp Lom, exposed his lack of tactics. Hertha Berlin. He literally resigned on a Facebook Live with fans. Sure, he's a great player, but as a manager, utter disaster, utter calamity. Yet the KFA thought that he was the man to replace Paolo Bento and take this cup, take this team to another level. I don't know what to say anymore. I'm fed up, I'm tired. I'm sad, I'm so sad. Because I love these players. Sonny. Lee Gang In. Kim Min Jae. We have world class talent. And they, you can see they want it so much too. And you can see how frustrated they are. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough being a fan right now. Honestly. I'm being completely honest. Hope Saudi thrash us. We go home. I get to see Sunny play for Tottenham. Youngin play for PSG. Everyone returns home. I get, I get to peacefully watch their them play for the European teams. Watch the K-League. And we fire Klinsman and we start over again. That's my honest opinion. I want that. I will... I don't know if it's controversial, but I will not be cheering for Korea to win in the round of 16 against Saudi Arabia. I don't know what you guys think. I feel like I rambled on in this video. Uh, briefly, yep, we are to touch on the Canty moving forward. We are going to play Saudi Arabia in the round of 16. Saudi Arabia uh, managed by Roberto Mancini. Um, Hwang Yi Chan and Kim Jin Soo are back. And honestly, that was maybe the one positive that I took from this game. They looked, they were sparks off the bench. And uh, also a mini shout out to Kim Young-won, who I thought, was quite good in this game, you know, had a couple of defensive lapses, but also you can't blame him when he's playing his first match in like weeks. Um, but he was much, much better and more natural fit building up from the back. So I want to see this pairing in Saudi Arabia uh, against Saudi Arabia. Uh, I think that match is on the 31st of January, at 10 a.m. Eastern, which is uh, my time zone. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not looking forward to it. We'll definitely watch, but honestly, it's a win-win. We either win and make it through to the next round, or we lose and Klinsman gets fired. So I will watch that match peacefully, knowing that no matter the outcome, I will sleep um, sound, safe and sound. So anyways, that brings us to an end to another video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.